When we left them, Joe and Mick were discussing the strength of the Australian breads in South Africa and the resultant impact on the South African buying bench at our sales. Let's head back to Oakland's Junction now as Mick talks about one of the true passions in his life, the beautiful Summer Hill Stud itself. Conveyance leads in the straight, 300 to go. Force Freeze driven after him from Salah. Then Global City, Green Beret. Here's Bankable coming from last. Bankable storming down the centre. Conveyance in front of Force Freeze. The class is telling it. Bankable swoops, 50 metres out, grabs the lead, draws clear. Bankable, Bankable by a length. Conveyance, then Force Freeze. As we talk now about Stallions, um, it was sad for you to lose Bankable early this year, but you You've got a powerful roster at present. Yeah, we do. I, um, we, we've got an ageing roster in terms of the proven horses. Um, they're, they're very good horses, but we've got a very strong uh, young roster of horses. And so hopefully um, something material will come through. What about uh, the horse Way West? Uh, he's an interesting uh, member of the roster and a son of Dane Hill that did his racing over here. He did. He won a prelude, didn't he? A Blue Diamond prelude, if, if I remember correctly. Um, he gets uh, decent juveniles, he, he's got a group one filly in his first crop, he's got a group one filly in his second crop, uh, performing fillies, and uh, he's got an unbeaten filly in his second crop as well. So he, his fillies have tended to be better than his colts at this point, but he's a smart little horse and he gets smart youngsters. Stadions of the past uh, make the standout must be Northern Guest. Uh, he was a blue blood that exceeded expectations at stud. My goodness Joe, you've done your research. He's the most famous resident of my farm ever. Um, he was an own brother to El Grand Senor and Try My Best. Uh, they were less than fertile, those two horses. He inherited what, what the good Lord didn't give the, others, the other two. But he was a hell of a stallion, and he won nine consecutive broodmare size titles, which equals Mr. Prospector's record. Um, just a, a, a huge contributor to, to our farm. But he also created a lot of employment in our district. You know, there were mares came in from all over Southern Africa to him and a lot of farms popped up around him. He was a remarkable horse. Mick, moving on to some of the new initiatives at Summer Hill, and currently you're playing your part in maintaining and safeguarding uh, the industry with uh, the Al Mukhtum School of Management Excellence. Um, quite an extraordinary initiative. Yeah, a huge extravagance for a Zulu farmer, let me tell you. Uh, it's, uh, quite, uh, but, but very fortunately, we've had wonderful support from people out there who've helped us with it. Um, the Zulus are among the finest horsemen I've ever come across anywhere in the world. They, they're astonishingly uh, dedicated to what they do. They, they're highly gifted people, they're very patient people. I've never seen a horse abuse a Zulu, and I've never seen a Zulu abuse a horse. And we felt it was the least we could do was to build this school. It's, it's the only one of its kind in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, we had five professors teaching there last year, uh, and then we have other professors like Mike Takaku who come and lecture to the kids there. Um, but it's a wonderful facility, and we, we've, we're taking in kids from all over the world now, so hopefully it will, it'll go from strength to strength. But I think we all owe this industry. This industry is hopelessly undercated for when it comes to education, and I think we neglect it, even though there's so much money in racing worldwide. We tend to forget that, that, that the skills need to be taught formally, and it's a leadership school, as you know. It's a management school, so it's, it's, it's another tier up. It's a challenge that the world racing industry faces to attract young people into the game because there are so many other attractive options and opportunities to earn a better income elsewhere. The obvious example is here in Australia. The mining industry is really having an impact um, on the ability of major studs to get young people to work on their farms. Yep. So something like this is very important for South Africa and perhaps um, a leaf should be taken out of the book here in Australia. Well, I think the whole world needs these kind of institutions. Um, we're very lucky in Africa uh, to have as big a pool of people who, who are keen to work in the industry. Um, I, uh, my, my fellows travel abroad. I've sent more than 40 of my Zulus abroad now on, on international scholarships starting 17 years ago. And that's lifted the entire workforce, the whole um, their, their, their self-esteem has risen, but they've, they've raised everybody around them as well. And I, I suspect that as more people shift out of the, the menial or the manual stuff in, in the horse game to industries like mining or technology or whatever, we're going to find this ch an ongoing challenge. It may well be that you'd find, you'll find um, Zulus working all over the world, you know. Uh, they're sought after. Everybody wants them back because they're as good as they are. Uh, and so maybe South Africa can become a pool for those sort of people.
my goodness, the world has changed. My recent travels to both hemispheres were stark reminders that the pace is really on. The Summer Hill DVD promotion that you do each year, uh, the most recent, I have to say, extremely impressive and not surprisingly, I'm led to believe it's won a pretty major award in South Africa. Joe, you were very kind when you saw it. I saw your, your email back to Teletrack at home, uh, and for which I'm very grateful. Uh, yeah, it was made by some Technicon students. It's the second year they've made it, and they've won the best short commercial at the Durban International Film Festival two years in a row. So we're very proud of what they've done. Uh, I have to give it to them. It, it, technologically, it was another level up. And I, it just goes to show what we can do, though, in, in, with, with the racing product in, in, in whatever form. I think race clubs can use it, um, as a, the, the, the betting companies can do it, uh, certainly breeders can make, can make use of this, this sort of technology. But it was, it was a masterpiece. I had nothing to do with the technology. Of course, these kids turned up. Um, one of them manages my blog site, uh, which is the most traversed in breeding in the world. Uh, little old Moy River, there we are at the bottom end of the, what the, the civilized world calls the darkest continent. And we have a blog site that's visited more often than any other thoroughbred breeding blog site in the world. Check the Alexa ratings in case you think I'm pulling your leg. <laughs> Mick, uh, it really is inspiring stuff and um, testament to your passion for the industry. Yeah, you know, we're all inspired by one another. I come here, I've got great friends in your industry here. So there's some remarkable human beings in, in, in the industry here. And I think the racing culture in Australia is probably the greatest in the world. I think Australians are, 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 are the soul of the business internationally. So for South Africans coming here, we get a hell of a lot of inspiration from meeting people here, seeing what you guys are doing. And of course, we've got a very well-managed industry back home. Um, but we're always interchanging ideas and we have great associations with local farms, uh, your Oz Horse crowd. And I've got to say this for you, the two sales, co well, your sales companies in this country and Oz Horse promote the sport of racing and, and promote uh, Australian breeding uh, better than any other country I know anywhere in the world. Um, you're better at, at, at not only at promoting but at, at receiving guests. The hosp hospitality is staggering. I'm not sure any industry, automotive, it doesn't matter what they are, I don't, I'm not sure any industry anywhere in the world is better promoted than Australian horses. We're very proud um, of that achievement too. I think the way we promote our racing, especially at carnival time, is, is something to behold the world over. And your racing is wonderful. You still get good crowds turning up despite the television coverage, despite the, the convenience of watching from your, you know, from, from home, etc. Um, but the wonderful vibes on your race courses, and I, that's something that we really feel uh, um, uh, an affinity for. Um, we see it on our very big days, but you guys seem to attract good crowds still, even at your other days. Mick, are there any horses currently at the track that will one day um, be likely to head to start at Summerhill? Well, you know the game. It's a fashion business. Um, you've got to keep topping up. And, and the, the, the attrition among stallions is high, as you know. So um, we're always on the lookout. You, you, I, there's very seldom a year that we don't end up with a new stallion at Summerhill of sorts, often two. Um, there'll be two going to stud this year. Uh, there were two last year. Um, there was one the year before and two, three the year before. So, you know, um, uh, I think you've got to maintain your roster and you've got to maintain the variety in your roster. And excitingly for us, um, we'd, we'd have customers across 22 time zones, the, from the Yoshidas in Japan all the way through a number of your top studs have got horses with us. Um, obviously, Dubai, uh, Hong Kong, um, England, Ireland, Germany um, and the United States. There are over 400 horses at Summerhill that belong to foreign owners. I think it's probably the biggest collection of foreign-owned racehorses on any one property in the world today. But it goes to show, you know, it's an international currency and it's an international um, uh, fetish. I think racing has just, it, 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 it's just become so completely international. Um, and I think we're the, the best example of how international it has become because Africa really in many respects uh, was a forgotten continent for a long time. And I think it's a, something of a tribute to South Africa that we've managed to attract these people from all over the world. The next major international yearling sale here in Australia obviously takes place at Newmarket in Sydney, uh, Inglis Easter, and you'd have to agree it's a pretty extraordinary catalogue. It's one of the great sales of the world today, I mean no question about it. And Australian breeding has come so far when you think how the whole scene has changed 
There was a time when we came here to buy those big, early maturing uh, Australian yearlings, uh, the Star Kingdom line horses and so on. Today that's almost unrecognisable and the Star Kingdom line has just about disappeared. It's been replaced by all these, these shuttle stallions and their, and their lineages. But of course Australia is now breeding a horse, a, a more classic sort of horse. Uh, you're still the aces of speed around the world. Uh, we were just talking about this yesterday and how New Zealand has changed. Um, you know, and you see it in the Melbourne Cup lineup today. All those great New Zealand stayers have almost disappeared. They're starting to breed horses for the shorter distances as well. But I guess that's how the world is, you know. It, it, we're always living in a state of flux and it's wonderfully exciting to see how it's changed. He's one of the pillars of the South African breeding community and he has some big ideas. Keep an eye out for Summer Hill on the world stage in years to come.